Don't ask. Don't ask it. Don't you ask if this is switchgrass or not. Don't you post a picture from 25 feet away and says, hey guys, this is switchgrass. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Hey guys, Jake Blow here, the Habitat Pro. It has been a while. Thanks for sticking with the channel here. We have been swamped this spring with canceled tours, makeups, spraying, uh, Kentucky tour, all kinds of stuff. So we're back on property. We finally got a chance to get out and spray our own stuff. It always is last, it seems. And I wanted to show you a follow-up of this plot, which was switchgrass drilled last year after tillage, okay? I do not recommend it. But when I got out here, my no-till drill just would not punch through that HD food plot screen trash. I had to till it up twice, and then I had already planted, so I planted some more. It was just a big gong show. I thought I'd see what happened, and I got a bunch of foxtails. So last year, I did nothing but mow. Every time I saw seed heads on the baby um, foxtail, okay? Now... What I have here, you can see, is my rows of switch that did pop up last year. Now, the, the problem with this particular stand is it was Northwoods Whitetail's HD food plot screen the previous season, okay? Now, I did try to plant that together, but I did it so wide. I'm going to show you this. I did it so wide that only the switchgrass on the edge was able to survive, okay? So if you are going to try that combination planting of an HD food plot screen from Northwoods Whitetails plus switchgrass, I highly recommend you plant it no wider than about 15 yards because sunlight just will not penetrate and get to the inside and you'll just end up with a bunch of perennial cool season grass back foxtail. It's just, it's gross. You got to keep it thin if you want a good stand to switch. I am way, way, way away from that. I'm now in the camp. We, we have RC switch grasses. Why on earth am I doing anything but spray, no-till, drill? It pops up in 10 days after the rain, sometimes sooner. I am never going to do these, you know, fly-by-night type of plantings again. It's just not worth it. This stuff is so fast and so good. I'm just going to plant it the way it's meant to be planted, and I'm going to do that like a farmer, okay? If you do it right, the stuff will outlive you and me and everybody else. It's a perennial. It keeps coming. So like I said previously, order a drill, rent one, purchase one, and then sell it off later. If you have a lot of switchgrass to do, guys, it is so worth knowing where it is by drilling it in in rows, okay? Here's my tidy little row. So I know this tall one is switchgrass, and it's got plenty of leaves. You can see I've got one, two, three, four leaves. So I can spray this, okay? So now look at the base. See that? It's nice and stiff, readily pops back up, okay? Readily pops back up. Foxtail, fleshy, fat. Fleshy and fat. Okay, that's what all of this stuff is. Fleshy, fat, red thing at the base. Okay, when uh, Roger's saying single tiller, you see that? So that's that single stem right there. See? Spray some foxtail.
there you have it. So hopefully in a few days we will get to see a bunch of maroon underneath the switchgrass, which is doing fine. You do have a little bit of a possibility of burn with switchgrass anytime you spray this chemical. It does have that effect sometimes, uh, especially if you're using the correct rate of MSO, methylated seed oil. This particular chemical jug that I use today called for a half a gallon per acre. It's very expensive, so you like to go full rate if you can. Make sure you're also using the full rate of MSO that it calls for. In this case, it was 1.5 pints, a pint being 16 ounces. Um, I will always help clients and non-clients identify switchgrass, identify foxtail, but please heed my advice. I am not an expert born in the womb. I just used common sense to say, you know what? When this seed is in the bag, that's the only time I know it's the only seed in the bag. Here's the best advice I can possibly give you, especially for switchgrass, but basically for anything. Plant some in potting soil, not uh, peat stuff or anything like that, as close to dirt as you can, but stuff that doesn't have weeds in it. Make sure that you plant in a number that you can do the math for your germination so you know what you're getting and then just keep it in the garden, keep it on the patio, keep it somewhere that you can kind of keep track of it and see what happens when that stuff pops up. The best timing is the day you plant it. All right, guys, if this was of any help to you today, please hit like, hit subscribe, share it out there on your social media platforms. I appreciate you sticking with me with the length of this video, but there was a lot I wanted to say to you guys because it's so many questions we get this time of year when foxtails popping up, switchgrass is popping up, everything is popping up. What do I spray? Can I spray anymore? Well, today I did quinclorac and 2,4-D with MSO because I didn't want to nuke everything. But on the other side of the property, I did Roundup 2,4-D, and I even had my tank conditioner in there before I added the chemical because you have to do that when you have rusty well water like I do. It's just stuff that you learn by doing. That's what this channel is all about. Hit like, hit subscribe, share it out there on your social media platforms if this was of any use to you. And as always, guys, get out and enjoy creation. Good luck this season, and God bless.